Faulkner was uh, without a doubt the greatest writer of the South. And many would argue, and I think many, many more would argue as the years go by, that he was America's greatest writer as well. He was born in 1897, and he died in 1963. He lived almost his entire life in Oxford, Mississippi. He had a, what he called a vagabond tour through Europe as a young man, and uh, his last years were spent at the University of Virginia as a writer in residence. He died shortly thereafter, back home in Oxford. He never finished any school in his life, he, except probably grade school. There was a genius cooking in, in his mind. His first three novels, uh, his critics said, were failures. Faulkner said the first two were, but the third wasn't. And so at a young age, 28, he thought that he was going to be a failure. The third novel was not published. He had never finished school, and he pretty much went to pieces. This is an incredible thing in his life. He sat down in a complete despair and wrote a novel that was to be named The Sound and the Fury. And it was immediately accepted by his critics as a work of genius. The Southern writer Walker Percy said that William Faulkner writing the first three novels and then turning around and writing The Sound of the Fury would be like Jerome Kern writing Showboat and then Beethoven's Ninth. There's no accounting for it. He then got full steam ahead and, and went for 10 years, he said 10 hot years, where he wrote probably his very greatest fiction. It's very, very complicated. Lots and lots of uh, what the critics call stream of consciousness. Lots of flashbacks, lots of starting novels in the middle, lots of uh, endings that really have to be contemplated for quite some time. Somebody once told him, they said, Mr. Faulkner, I, I have read this novel nine times and I don't understand it. And he said, read it 10. That's the joy of reading Faulkner. It takes so much work, but when the penny drops, it's the greatest thrill in your life. Your mind just opens to brand new visions that you never thought that, that, uh, that you would have. Probably the best advice on how to read Faulkner was given by another great Southern writer, George Garrett. He said in a preface to a, a new edition of one of Faulkner's novels, he said, William Faulkner is not hard. He said he just makes you look at things that you, in ways which you never would have imagined, and he makes you to do it very fast. So it's an, an extreme exercise of the mind to improve one's vision, the way one sees things, the way simple, simple description can shed light on the real world that we live in. Faulkner, after the first 10 years, went out of print. People gave up on the difficulty of him. He was stone broke and had to move to Hollywood and write for the moving pictures, wrote of a couple of, of the Bogart movies. I'm looking for a good mystery on something off the beaten track. A critic in New York named Malcolm Cowley got the idea of coming up with an edition on Faulkner of what his publishers called the portable, you know, the portable Joyce, the portable Dante, the portable this, that, and the other. Come up with a portable Faulkner, and it was a success. People began to see in some chronological order what he was doing and people then turned and, and bought his novels again in 1950. He won the Nobel Prize. He gave a beautiful short speech in which he said that the uh, project of human life is to endure. It's to endure to the end. I believe that man will not merely endure, he will prevail. He is immortal, not because he alone among creatures has an inexhaustible voice, but because he has a soul a spirit capable of compassion and sacrifice and endurance. 
The poet's, the writer's duty is to write about these things. It is his privilege to help man endure by lifting his heart, by reminding him of the courage and honor and hope and pride and compassion and pity and sacrifice, which have been the glory of his past. Any writer, he said, must begin by, quote unquote, uh, weeping over universal bones. You've got, you've got to experience the sadness. You've got to break out of your illusions. Faulkner was one of those great artists who said that the uh, purpose of art is not to enchant, but it's to do the opposite. It's to disenchant. It's to make you see clearly. It's to break through all of those illusions and then endure in the world that you see completely uh, stripped of the illusions that human beings carry on with them and, and, make, them ha and make them happy. I, th I think he's a, a, a writer who knew the South, who knew how to write to defeated people, who knew how to give hope to defeated people by making them see clearly and learning that the victorious life is the life that endures.